this meeting, the board of selectmen to order, if I could. Could I have an acceptance of the agenda, please? So moved. I have a second. A yeah, motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Watkins, if you could come up. And most of us know who you are, but if you don't mind just giving us your name and address, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Doris Query, 8 Oceanside Drive, Thank Situate. You. And uh, with me is Joe Rossi from Marshfield. All right. And we're here to talk about the Bigger Waters Act of 2012. And the good news, it's about an amendment that's in Washington and uh, it is pending with discussion uh, down there starting on the 9th. So I'm gonna turn it over to Joe and let him bring you up to date on all of this. Thank you. Um, you have the letter in front of you um, right now. My name's Joe Rossi. I'm the chair of the Marshfield Citizens Coastal Coalition and acting chair of the Massachusetts Coastal Coalition. Um, real quickly, the Massachusetts Coastal Coalition was founded um, about a year and a half ago, but recently became active again within the last two months. This um, Massachusetts Coastal Coalition is a regional coalition of communities all up and down right now, southeastern Mass, including the Cape, coming together to support legislation to postpone um, changes to bigger waters, but still in favor of reforming uh, the flood insurance program. Um, in front of you is a letter that the coalition has drafted that we hope to send to Congress before they discuss their, um, uh, this, the legislation uh, next week. Um, it, it's really what it's doing is outlining the challenges um, that we face here in um, Plymouth County specifically, but really all of New England. Um, and what we're asking um, for your, the selectmen here in Situate to do is to sign the letter um, uh, as selectmen of Situate and uh, return it to the Massachusetts Coastal Coalition as we gather signatures much like yours all over Massachusetts to then send the letter um, to Congress. Um, this is happening. We have currently about 18 member communities of the Massachusetts Coastal Coalition and many other organizations that are not um, uh, representing the governments of those communities. So that's a little bit of an overview of the letter and who we are at the coalition. Um, and Doris, I don't know if you had anything you wanted to add. No, I think just that time is of the uh, urgency. Um, what this uh, amendment will do is it will reinstate grandfathering for primary residents. It does not help those people who are in pre-firm structures. We would like to have had the legislation be something different, but there is no way if we want to get anything passed and implemented to start making changes in this. This uh, legislation are two bills that are identical, one in the House and one in the Senate. When they each get voted on, they don't go to conference, they don't go to committee, none of that. They would just move on then to the president to sign. And uh, Greater New Orleans, they issued a letter similar to this, and because of the number of signatures on it and the breadth of the uh, signatures in the sense of we were on that one as well, as well as situate, and um, that went to uh, the president himself, um, you know, in hopes of, so that I feel kind of initiated what we have as legislation down there. Uh, this in no way is going to stop making further moves on legislation, but this would repeal the grandfathering and bring it back to what people had prior mm. to changing uh, on their properties in 2012 and July 6th. And you need this signed, returned by the 9th? Well, that's what we're hoping. We're actually going to take the signatures and send them digitally along with all the other ones we're gathering in one letter to um, all of the members of Congress and uh, the Senate. Um, so ideally, we'd like to have them back at the beginning of next week, if possible. Um, the discussion will begin on the 9th, but we don't feel that the vote will happen until the end of next week if they do take up a vote. There's a very good possibility that this could carry into the beginning of next year, but uh, we don't want to take the chance of missing out on the opportunity of getting to them um, before that uh, happens. All right. I just don't know. I suppose we could, you know, leave this across the hall. We could individually sign it if 
if that's I something we can do. I think you should do. take it under advisement. All right. Yeah, we got to read it first. Yeah, that's right. No, I haven't even, that's what I said. I haven't even <laughs> yeah. looked at yeah. it. Yeah, no, we can't do anything tonight, obviously. Um, also, just so you know, um, at the top, there is our website. The letter is at our website for your convenience as well. Um, and there's also a, um, a little uh, form you can fill out to sign it digitally right on the website as well. So you can spread the word and also for your own convenience, sign it that way as well. Okay. Comments, questions? Just a quick comment, Joe. I want to thank you for spearheading this. I heard, I've hear, heard you on the radio. Mm -hmm. You were at the rally. And, you know, you're really one of the real reasons this is getting pushed as fast as it is. So you're doing a great job, you and, and all the people involved, thank especially you. Dave Ball and the people from Situate as well. But, um, you know, thank you for taking the lead on it. Well, well thank Doris. you. Doris, right? Yes. Doris, yes. Doris. Doris. I was going yes. to class. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say uh, David's had another meeting tonight, or he would be here with us. So right. we have a few of the Situate Coastal Coalition here with us. Right. Right. Great. Well, thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Thank right. you. Great. Thank you. Any other walk-ins? <clears throat> no. Agenda item number three is a discussion vote and award of contact for the schematic design of the public safety complex. Trisha. In the name of the company, Doran Whittier of Newburyport. I didn't see any backup. My only question was where the others might have come in at if this is 60,000. Do you happen to know? I mean, was it close? Were there two bidders? Were there 10? Two, um, two, two things. One is um, um, you don't have the contract because I do not have the contract, so I probably ask that this be tabled to the okay. 17th unless you're comfortable doing it contingent on the changes Jim Toomey has recommended, which are minor, he said by email today. That is why you don't have any backup because I didn't get the contract from him, although he did say it's minor stuff. To answer your question is when we engage a contractor for um, schematic design, it is not a bid process. We actually establish the price in the uh, request for proposals, and then we just select an architect that um, we feel best meets the responsiveness and the criteria we're looking for. And as you know, the Public Building Commission does that. And they recommend to me um, their top two or three, and then I negotiate with the um, selected person. But it's a fixed fee, short, plus or minus some things, and it's for $60,000. <coughs> Do you need it before the next meeting, or can we? Um, I, I think if you're comfortable not having paper in front of you, which you know I like to have and you like to have, I think I'm comfortable since it is a fixed fee and we can get Doran Whitty working right away. Um, based on what Jim told me today, if I hadn't gotten that email from him, I would say no. But since it's over 50000 it is a board vote. Otherwise, it's another agenda item for you on the 17th. So the motion would be amended contingent on town council's assent. It's a standard form AIA contract, so um, which I'm sure John knows. So it's nothing unique in that, yeah. that line. And it holds them responsible to the RFP we issued and their response to the RFP. And Doran Whittier was on the, uh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Rick. Yep. And Doran Whittier was on the list from the Public Building Commission. Doran Whittier was one of the, um, we received nine proposals, they interviewed five. Doran Whittier was recommended. And again, as with the OPM, is the recommended architect for the Gates Feasibility Study. So there's synergy there by having the same OPM and the same architect, although we both did extremely separate processes and ended up in the same place. So, uh, so I would say let's wait unless you tell me you need it before two weeks. I don't think it's going to be... Okay. Um, so fatal. I would say we one. wait so we can. Yep. And so right. I'd like to look at the RFP. Do yep. I, okay. I don't remember that. Sure. All right. Okay. Him, uh, the 17th. Yeah. And will you make a note to make sure I include the RFP in the contract, please? Yeah. All right. Uh, number four, discussion about um, the <coughs> donation of land policy. I think we had a gender item that's coming up after <coughs> this had come up maybe last month. And Tricia had wanted to have something in place. We got that already. It's in here. So we got a version of that. Yep. I read it over. To me, I don't know, unless, I, unless I'm missing something. It doesn't seem like a, a lot of properties coming off our tax rolls that, you know, I don't know. I, I, I personally don't think it's a bad thing to accept land if people want to donate it. But that's just my own opinion. I could be all alone. 
or, you know, oh, they know it could, be un, it could be unbuildable, it could be wet, and it would never have anything built there in, you know, many, many years. You know, you know the uh, amount of money here coming off the taxes is, is not a lot of money. But, but that's just my own thought. I throw that out there, and whoever else might have a, an opinion. Well, I think that this if you look at that in a vacuum, that's true. But if you look at the CPC acquisitions that's also come out of the tax roll, it's sort of cumul cumulative over the term, too. It's another way to look at it. But that's a different yeah. subject. Where, you know, the, yeah, I agree with Rick. I mean, this, this, is, this, this is for free, CPC, where we're paying for this, you know? And well, I think in some cases, a lot of money. I think one of the things you have to look at is when somebody has property, they're paying taxes on it, in all probability that property is, is not going to yield the highest use, which is development residential. So they have it. And the next question that we have is, is this is a policy for the town to decide whether or not they want to take it back to maybe augment certain um, um, uh, areas that they're trying to preserve. If it's water areas, we might be able to say, yes, we'd like to do that because it's going to further protect it. If there are areas that maybe we could maybe use for a connection, for linkage for various neighborhoods, uh, again, this isn't like taking buildable lots in all probability, although I think the next subject is a possibility. So I think it's a policy that the board should be able to take a look at. It's not a mandatory item. It's, it's, it's pretty deferential or discretionary if the board wants to do so. Um, and the policy is in place for us to take a look at it. If we decide not to, we don't have to take it. And uh, I think that's the only thing. I think the one thing that I've always said is that instead of having people immediately saying we're going to give it to conservation, uh, being on the Board of Selectmen, I'd rather see it given back to the town, and that's the Board of Selectmen, to decide the use of it. And if the Board elects to put it into conservation, we'll put it into conservation. The reason why I've always said that the Board should have the option is because some of these pieces or parcels could be used for recreation. Um, once it goes into rec uh, conservation, the only way you're going to be able to, shall we say, peel back that restriction is you have to go to Beacon Hill and Legislature to be able to do so. Um, and I'd rather have the board have that option because we could have some grand plan through our de building department or rather our planning department to kind of string these things together as we go forward, whether gaining access to beaches, whether it's putting a, 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 a trail, walking trail, um, so that people can get into these areas. Um, that's the only reason why I've, I've always advocated giving the option to the board of selectmen to decide. And I know uh, about two or three years ago we had a lot up off of Hatherley uh, that we're talking about maybe bringing back to sell because it is a buildable lot. So I think, you know, there's some options here in the future. You could take some parcels of land that in the past have been nominal or for tax purposes and maybe due to sewer or some other type of changes in the um, 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 subsurface and the, the, you know, for, for being able to perk it, maybe become buildable, then the town can maybe take it, give it to Habitat for Humanity, Affordable Housing Trust, or maybe even sell it to try to generate more income for the general fund when we have all these other things, all these other problems or deficits. So, another reason why you'd like absolutely there's a range of, of possibilities that could benefit the town, and that's why I think a policy is not it's a policy, it's not a as all our other policies, it's it's for the board to be guided by to take a look at, but it's not mandatory. And, and again, if somebody the board says whether it's this board or a future board says we don't want it, we don't want to adhere to it, that's that's the board's discretion. It's their prerogative. Okay. Tony. Yeah, I mean, I guess my question was: Is this memorandum? This isn't the actual policy, though. This is just the no, points. No, I don't know. I, well, yeah. That was re-included. The, the memo that I sent to the. To, con conservation to conservation after the board's meeting um, dated November 25th outlines the things we wanted them to yeah. consider. I think, I think your memorandum is great, and I think it brings up many points that I didn't think of that we should take into consideration when looking at a piece of property. Mm -hmm. And similar to other things that we have, that it's a guideline for us to use exactly. when we decide. But you have to have it written down, I think, is what Trisha's point is, because we may not think of these 10 points when we look at every piece of property. And... You know, I don't think we always want to take a piece of land just because someone wants to get rid of it. Correct. You know, because okay. they don't want to maintain it or they don't mm -hmm. want to pay the taxes no matter how much how nominal they are on it. Right. So I would vote yes to get some sort of guideline, you know, take these points in this in this um, memorandum and put them in a guideline form so we can just have it every time we get a piece of property we say, does it abut something we want? Do, you know, does it meet any of these criteria? Um, 
And it's a, go, a growing, in the future, you may come up with a new criteria right. that becomes relevant for that future board for whatever changes, you know, that may take place in that loca location. But if you run point. against a piece of property that doesn't hit any of them, then it's, a e it's, it's an clearly easy decision. I agree. Yeah. That's what I thought. Anyone else? <laughs> Rick? Yeah, I support having these guidelines written down. There's no policy here to review or vote on or anything, but I guess I just say the sense of the board is put together a one side of a piece of paper as guidelines of these are the things that need to be considered. I would not support a policy that says we will accept land under the following conditions or we won't accept land under the other following conditions. We really don't have piles and piles of these cases that come before us. We have two, three a year. Trish has done a good job articulating how many in the last five or six years. Sean, as you pointed out, it's not a heck of a lot of tax money. Um, but if we just have these are the things that the various boards as well as ourselves to Mr. Danahy's point should consider it's a good reminder and it would bring some consistency to the process so I would support that okay, great so I'm confused because <laughs> that's the discussion we had in your November meeting and you asked you didn't want a policy you wanted guidelines right that's fine so and then those guidelines went to the Conservation Commission for their feedback but if I hear you right, Rick, you want those same guidelines for the board to have before them when we get land requests in the future, like you said, put them on a piece of paper. Sure. And I would I also add what John just mentioned, is there a potential, is it a developable lot, is there a That's potential one of the bullet points. for it Should to, be. you know, that adds yep. to the 10 that are here right now. And I can revise that and just put it as a document that yeah, you can Yeah, just have. as, uh, you know, points to consider or guidelines for consideration of potentially okay. donated land. In a Something like here that. and everyone so far if it it doesn't have to pass the majority or anything like that it's up for whatever, whoever's sitting here at that time to say yes on it just just a guideline right. we had one yeah. I think it was last year we were talking about it up on Hadley near the squash cup yep. uh, pine mm -hmm. and the issue was what I raised was you know it was going to conservation mm -hmm. uh, around the pond but I said is that a parcel the, the, because it was right on the roadway for people in the audience mm -hmm. who don't understand. Is this part of the road that in the future, if there's ever going to be a bike path, um, that we'd want to have without that restriction? I remember that. So you have that ability to use that portion of land. Um, and, and that's the other thing that I'm saying. You, know, you don't know what's going to come up in the future because all of a sudden, 10 years ago, we never talked about bike paths. And then, boom, the past 10 years, we have bike paths. So you might find land that we end up acquiring for the purposes to further augment that use. Um, for recreational purposes that's that's the reason why I say it's kind of like a constant changing evolving if you will policy that, or to take a look at these guidelines as guidance as you say but ultimately it's 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 not static it's you know, one, of, one of the things also have on there is sometimes the donors would be interested in do donating it only for conservation other times they'll say let's donate to the town for conservation and when you ask them they're saying they'll say Actually, I don't really care if it's conservation or now that you think about it. So we should make sure we have that dialogue with the potential donor. So that, I would suggest, would be part of the bullet points is the intent or the requirements of the donor just to make sure that that's explicitly that addressed. Okay. You know. Good point. Right. Uh, so I think let's just carry on. I don't think we need a motion. Just well, I don't know. I think we do. I think that's what Trisha's asking for, for the last month. Well, I'm not going to be able to. I can't move to vote a, a, a document I haven't seen yet. No, no. I can I can yeah. add the things that we just did if All you right, want. We can, and yeah. Just put it as a separate we'll one piece. Future meeting. And it'll just it'll do exactly as you say. Now you know we gave this to conservation. You want your own. I'll add the talk points that aren't here, yeah. and then we'll just have guidelines. Yeah. yeah. And you can vote and to, to adopt all the boards. them. They'll just be guidelines, not a policy. Yeah, and then go yeah. to all the boards. This is what we're thinking of. And can, right. we can and do that for the 17th. And this one already went to CONCOM. Yeah. The, the next, the next it's agenda easy item? No, no. This so is, yes, we right. Change yeah, we have from Pat's basically uh, from policy to guidelines as well. We'll change it from yeah, a memo to a memo separate I, doc. Yeah, it's right. But I mean, as far as on the motion, yeah, we, we, it isn't really a policy. It's just guidelines. Every situation. That's what you decided in November. Every situation is different. Because a policy, you have to follow just guidelines just to gives us some flexibility. Yeah. yeah, but on the motion itself, it does. It was saying policy. That's no, right. but I, that, it's no no problem to have that for. Um, it's good to get this down. The seventeen. Down. Right. That's the key thing. And this by by doing this will have no effect on the next one where we're going to discuss a donation. Let's talk about it. Let's All do right. It. All right. So we'll move on to the next one. It's in <coughs> fact a um, the reason we had this discussion. I think a couple of months ago 
was for this next um, agenda item. It's a donation of a parcel of land on Shadwell Road. Uh, I, I'll okay. take the lead, Mr. Chair, if you want me to, because I've talked to Mr. That. Lawrence. Can someone just tell me where it is? It's, so I was just going to start with that. If Tilden you go down and Tilden and Turner, there's a uh, at the juncture there. If you go back either street, one block, it's a, it's a street that cuts right around to cr create a square or rectangle. So that's this. Okay. So just Turner. That right there. That's, correct. that's Tilden. Know. Tilden. You see the EN yeah, of Tilden right. there? Yeah. And then Turner's off right the right map right. over to the top. There you go. So anyway, Mr. Larson um, has sent this to the town. He actually contacted me uh, requesting whether or not the town would be interested in taking back land that he owns. He's identified it by its um, uh, parcel number 39-26-250. Um, previously, he's donated two, two parcels abutting both of them on Shad Ro Shadwell Road to the conservation. Uh, we've accepted them in the past. Um, he submitted this back in August, and the reason was because it's been delayed is due to the fact that we've been kind of dealing with this policy issue, what we're going to be doing with it. Needless to say, um, he's looking to do it before the end of the year, and the reason is because he's going to get a tax benefit by it. Now, I said to him I'd approach the board, talk to the board. Um, again, I also mentioned that the reason why I was trying to avoid any type of conservation restriction is that we could take a look at these parcels and determine whether or not maybe the town can use it for its own reasons. The three reasons that came to my mind were first, and not necessarily in this order, but it could go to uh, Habitat for Humanity in the event that there was any sewage that's going to go down Shadwell Road. It could go to the Situate Affordable Housing Trust to be able to uh, build on it. Or if the town decided, as its own decision, to keep it and in the future sell it in the event that we needed to generate money for some downside or uh, for the general fund. So. Um, in any event, Shadwell Road is not sewered. All these parcels and these properties have to have Title V septic system. It's my understanding that it may be on the next priority for sewering if it gets there. So um, I did explain that to Mr. Uh, Larson, and he said he didn't really care. He's trying to get this done before the end of the year to get his tax benefit, whatever that may be. It's my understanding, I think it's a part of his submission, that he submitted what the um, assessor's office assesses it for. Uh, for tax purposes, I believe annually, I think he's paying taxes. $176. I was going to say, like, is it $176 or $400 or something? Right the value is $13.9. Is that what it is? Yeah. So it's not like he's paying a lot in taxes to the town. So the question to the board is does the board just want to be able to accept it back? If so, great. If the board decides not to, that's fine too. But um, my only push on this would be <clears throat> if there is going to be sewer in the future on this road, the Board of Selectmen will have the option to decide to do what it wants to do and make this a buildable lot because that could become a buildable lot if it's sewered. And that gives us the option to decide what we want to do. And if we don't, then I'll inform Mr. Larson that the uh, town is not interested. If, if um, <clears throat> you had that conversation with him, or, or if Title V regulations change and all of a sudden, yes, yeah, sewer might not go down there, but all of a sudden it could be something could be built there. So as long as you've had that discussion I've with him. I've had that specific you know, I'd, discussion I'd, with him. Know, I told him that. He could be sitting, you know, 10 Because I didn't want him to think that by, by taking it back that he'd be foregoing potentially 100 or 150 or whatever the price may be. And he's well aware of it. So. Anyone else have any thoughts or comments based on that? I do. Yeah, I'm in favor of accepting this land for us, um, but I would want it to be contingent upon, and I say this just to cover ourselves, a, a brief letter from him, from the uh, donor, that it's fine with him that it not go into conservation. All right. Just okay. Just so it's really. You know what? I, that's that's fair. I can tell you. He said he doesn't care whether it goes to conservation. No, absolutely. I'm not questioning but that you, at all. You, you but just to have it. No. Just so that's written down to cover ourselves. Yeah. Sure. So I'm fine. I don't want to like table this until then. I just let's make it contingent upon us getting a letter from him saying he is fine with it being donated to the town, not necessarily the commission itself. All right. Okay. Everyone else all right with that? Yep. All right. Accept the motion. Uh, I'll move the board of selectmen vote 
to accept parcel ID 39-26-25-0-R, 26 Shadwell Road, to be placed in the care and custody of the town of Situate, comma, um, pending receipt of a letter from Mr. Henry Larson, Jr., uh, confirming um, that he is not specifically donating it for conservation. Uh, before I ask for a second, John, what's your, uh, I thought we got a letter from him. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Rick, did that satisfy you? I didn't. Well, the reason is is because the, the way the motion said conservation, I just wanted to make sure that All right. we're covered. Okay. All right. I have a motion and do I'll I have second. a second? I'll motion second. and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Unanimous. Number six is a discussion and a vote to request the Department of Revenue for a limited scope management review. Town. I think we spoke about this a couple of meetings ago, or a year or so ago. <clears throat> Trisha, I had asked you earlier about downsides to this. You really said there wasn't any. It was, it was not a cost to the town to do this review. And, um, you. Okay, and did, did I read somewhere that Marshall has just done this? All right. Nope. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I, I think I outlined it in the board that um, DOR has a very respected division on the technical assistance division that comes in for your charge to look at um, governance issues in communities and um, can provide a lot of best practice information and has a lot of experience at other communities. Um, I used it in past communities and um, not recently, but um, I understand their expertise and um, knowledge has really expanded and that's why there's sometimes a six month wait time for them to come in. But I think um, from looking back on the last year, I think it's something that I would certainly welcome in trying to see how we can be more effective and better manageable because it's really getting to be quite a chore. Um, and so this is a way to look at that and see what might make sense. And I, you know, I don't know, and maybe you don't know, but maybe they have some ideas. And if, this might be a stupid question, but if they had some changes, would it have to go to town meeting to get approval? Well, charter changes have to go to town meeting to petition the legislature to do that, or you can have a full-blown charter commission, or you can have that government study committee that we talked about um, earlier. Well, last year, I think. Um, no, earlier this year. So um, I think this at least helps them, you know, if they can have a report and respond to, that that saves a lot of time because it provides a lot of data, a lot of information. Great. No, the only thing I'd add is that they're not coming in and looking at the way the town runs in totality. We're, we're asking them to do two specific tasks. You know, look at the timetables that we have to deal with in terms of our budget season and look at our organizational structure in terms of responsibility. So, you know, they're, they're coming in with a real specific task and they're going to dive into it and give us feedback. And then if we like it, we can implement it. And if we don't like it, we can. Right. That's on. why it's called a limited scope one. You, they do do big, huge things that result in, um, but this is just a limit <coughs> to your approach, just the two specific areas. I think it's great. Marsh, when Marshall's was done, we have access to that as well, Tricia. Yep, we do. I can give it to you. Uh, Rocco emailed it to me. Actually, their study recommended um, that they create the position of finance director, so um, slash treasurer collector. So when Nancy came over here, they are now advertising for that position, and it's based on the DOR study. Motion. Is there is there a cost to it? Nope. Great. <coughs> All right. Move, motion. move the Board of Selectmen vote to approve and endorse the request to the Dar Department of Revenue Technical Assistance Section to perform a management review for Town of Situate. Second. Okay, motion. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Great. Agenda item number seven, our list of annual license renewals. If someone wants to. <coughs> move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the following liquor licenses for 2014. Barker Tavern, Riva Restaurant, Satua Tavern, Cosmos Cafe, Gannett Grill, The River Club, Hatherley Golf Club, Oro Restaurant, The Inn at Situate Harbor, PJ's Country House, Situate Country Club, Situate Harbor Yacht Club, Galley, Mulaney's Harborside, Stillwater Wine and Gourmet, JW's Burger Bar, 
Widow's Walk Golf Course, Tedeschi's Food Shop, TK O'Malley Sports Cafe, Situate Package Store, San Zen Cafe, San Zen Retail Wine and Beer, Situate Racket and Fitness, Situate Post 3169, Reynolds Package Store, The Village Market, Harborside Wine and Spirits, Millwharf Restaurant, and Front Street Gourmet Wine and Spirits. Thank you, Rick. I have a motion and a second. second. Uh, have Discussion? A second. Yes. I have a question. Why Situate Harbor Yacht Club got a liquor license? Don't they have their own, like, BYOB or something? It's like any other club, isn't it? They, I'm just curious. They don't, they don't sell liquor. Right? Uh, I'm ticket system, don't they? Isn't it? No, you bring your own, I think. I'm, I'm not a member. You still need one to bring it in. Yeah. Right. I'm so a member there. Things. It is BYOB. So... Wow, can't believe they allow both. Huh. All right. Yeah. Anyway, just curious. All right. All right. I know certainly the uh, Inner Situate Harbor doesn't. You can't bring any alcohol into your rooms because they have a bad premises. Yeah, that's a different scenario, though. Well, right. but it's a similar situation. You're bringing in alcohol where you have a liquor license. That seems strange. I remember in years past when a place did not have a liquor license. Like years ago, the flounder and restaurant to Chinese food, you could yeah, bring in that place. Yeah, BYOB. Yeah. 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 Then, when they got the license, I you think could. they surrendered that, correct? Right. Yeah, you, yeah, you there must be like a most. corking fee or a corking license I to do it or something. Oh. Huh. I don't know, I was just kind of curious. Oh. Well, all right. The no name right. restaurant in Boston years ago. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, I have a motion and <laughs> a second. I think oh, I can tell you some stories. Did we yeah. ask for a vote? If we didn't, no. We all right, done. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, someone want to move on to the next one? Move the Board of Selectmen <coughs> vote to renew the following common vicular's licenses for 2014. Barker Tavern, Reaver Restaurant, Satua Tavern, Cosmos Cafe, Gannet Grill, The River Club, Hatherley Golf Club, Oral Restaurant, Inn at Situate Harbor, PJ's Country House, Situate Country Club, Situate Harbor Yacht Club, <coughs> Galley, uh, JW's Burger Bar, Window, uh, Widow's Walk Golf Course, Tedeschi's Food Shop, TK O'Malley Sports Cafe, San Zen Cafe, Situate Racket and Fitness, Post, Situate Post number 3169, The Village Market, The Millworth Restaurant, Front Street Gourmet, Wine and Spirits, Driftway Donuts, and Harbor Donuts, and Harbor Donuts. There you go. Motion a second. Second. All right. Mm -hmm. Motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So I got a question on this. Is, is Dunkin' Donuts? How come Dunkin' Donuts isn't on here? Yeah, Speaking Driftway of Donuts. 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 Yeah. Is that That's Driftway Donuts? Driftway. Technical, name, yeah. technical name is the others. Right. Driftway right. Donuts and Harbor Donuts. Yeah, okay. Just wondering. It's not finished. So one, 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 uh, Marty has a good question. Why don't you ask him? Well, just, just going back, it just, just occurred to me, but we've, we've renewed a liquor license to the Inn at Situate Harbor, which is in the middle of a transfer. So how does that work? If you do not renew it. They um, can't transfer it? Right. Okay. So we're renewing it to the old people, and they're going to transfer. transfer. Okay. All right. Thank you. Move the Board of and vote to renew the following entertainment licenses for 2014. Barker Tavern, Reva Restaurant, Gannett Grill, The River Club, Hadley Golf Club, Inn at Situate Harbor, uh, PJ's Country House, Situate Country Club, Situate Harbor Yacht Club, The Galley, JW's Burger Bar, TK O'Malley Sports Cafe, San Zen Cafe, Situate Post 3169, and the Mill Wharf Restaurant. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Move the Board of Selectmen vote to renew the innkeeper's license for the Inn at Situate Harbor for 2014. A motion and a second. second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I think that does it. If I didn't, if I didn't miss anything, good. license renewals for tonight. And there were asked some from I think our last meeting if we could sign later on. Save you taking a couple hours to sign a whole pile of them. Agenda item number eight is to open the annual town meeting warrant, which the ATM will be April fourteenth, two thousand and fourteen. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to open the April 14th, 2014 annual town meeting warrant at 7.42 p.m. Motion and a second. Second. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Just was going to mention the articles need to be submitted in the Selectman's office in the next two weeks. 7.38. Didn't I say 7.38? What did I say? It said 7.42. Oh, 7.38. It's actually... 736. 737. Right well, I did it. It's broadcast, and it'll probably be delayed. <laughs> there we are. Kim, pick a time. <laughs> um, next My agenda apologies. item. Number nine is to uh, debate a water and sewer bill. 
Move the Board of Selectmen vote to postpone agenda item number nine. I'll second that. Yeah, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Right. Okay. Opposed? None. Okay. Agenda item number 10 is the week. Uh, the annual report, the annual, the weekly report. The annual, the that works for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, weekly annual uh, report, by the way. It's going to be annual, annual just a second. Annual town meeting. <laughs> a few more weeks. Um, in the week ahead from Trisha. I thought I had a ton of stuff, but it's all gone out of my head. Um, two things. Um, I've been working on the capital plan because um, that needs to be done as all the operating budgets are due on the 12th. Nancy's been a great resource already um, helping in that and working through it the first time. Um, lots more capital projects this year um, requested um, so that we added to the already five-year rolling that we have so it's quite a bit of work there um, and the only other thing that I want to share with the board is that I have appointed a new council on aging director her name is Linda Prezuti Hayes she is the current assistant director of the council on aging in the town of Duxbury and she will begin work December 30th and she will come to meet you at your December 17th meet, meeting Great. at the beginning so she can introduce to you Florence's last day is December 20th she will be available to orient Linda to um, their duties uh, Linda was the unanimous recommendation and choice of the chair and vice chair of the Council on Aging of which Florence also interviewed and the staff so um, everybody's on the same page and we really look forward to her starting and it's good uh, news it's great the good manager job. of social services started yesterday so lots of good changes at the Council on Aging it's excellent thank you Is that it yes thank you agenda item number 11 uh, is other business correspondence and minutes I'll start with the minutes if someone wants to go with that first move the board Stuckman <clears throat> vote to accept the regular session minutes of November 26 2013 second a motion a second all those in favor aye aye, aye. 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 move the board Stuckman vote to accept the executive session minutes of November 12th and November 26th second a motion a second all do I say no release no release yes. I have a motion and a second. All those Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? All right. None. Correspondence. Let's see. There's none? There's got to be something. You can't let Ma Marty off without anything. <laughs> sure you can. <clears throat> Marty, read all those licenses again. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> all right. I'm, well, while, he's, while he's looking Where's for something, day? I'll Arbor jump day. over to Rick. Day. Where's Arbor Day where you need it? Other business. Any other business, Rick? No. Good. Did, yeah, just to let you know, obviously, uh, this Friday is first Friday for the uh, merchants on Front Street downtown. Uh, if you haven't already uh, started your holiday shopping, by all means, please start lo uh, shopping local. Um, it's, it's obviously in the evening, and uh, they do a really nice job, the merchants. Um, second, um, for those of are interested the you know Santa will be coming in this Saturday. I think Tony will probably elaborate oh. a little bit more. Um, this is when Santa comes in off the uh, off the boat I love and this. is greeted by all the kids. Um, I believe it starts at 10, and then from there there will be a procession down to um, the Situate Harbor um, um, Community Center. Sorry, I'm going to say Pier 44 for those people who don't know what it is, um, and uh, where Santa will be able to meet and greet all the kids. John, how long does Santa stay for? An hour and a half. Usually hours. until hours. all the kids have, okay. have, have gone hours. through the line. It could be two to three, two or three hours. hours. Yeah. Okay. All and right. also just, just note, there's know. there's a lot of crafts. It's all free. There's food and drink and crafts for all the kids to do so. And food. And you make cookies and, and food. The uh, merchants are also looking forward to the stroll. So if <coughs> the kids go in one direction, you know, the parents can go in the other and, and do some shopping. The third thing that's, uh, that's going on is um, Christmas wreaths. Uh, the merchants, various ones who are participating have it, and um, I think you vote on it. And so uh, it's a great weekend for shopping. Obviously, the holidays are coming quickly upon us. The other thing is uh, there are various fairs and, um, like, bazaars that the various churches are putting on. Uh, frequent them. Try it. See what it, see what it's like. And uh, that's it for me. Right. right. I was going to just mention, just add to that. Now's the time that you, you don't want to forget those businesses when you brought your children down for Halloween and the businesses were so generous to the kids. Now it's That's right. Good point. Payback. 
Tony. Yeah, I'll just piggyback to what John also, after <clears throat> um, the um, Santa stroll, the Polar Express is that afternoon, which is uh, the train ride. Um, you pick it up at uh, Greenbush Station and go to North Pole and back. And um, that supports the Shore Foundation and the Course Foundation. And then also the house tour is Sunday. So there's a, I don't remember how, five, maybe four, five, six houses um, decorate themselves and uh, and have a nice festive event for, for uh, people to go to the house tour. So how do they, I, I know my wife had talked about going on that. How do the, how do they do that, Tony? How do they go about finding you, out how You to get tickets, um, that's sponsored by, no, no, it's, um, is it, is course? it course? Yes. Course, course does the house tour? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And I think you can get tickets oh, at the, the, uh, the Polar Express. Express. That's the Polar Express. Yeah, no. Is it the beautification or? No, it's, uh, no. I'll take it. I thought it was the association that does the. My wife. Well, but my wife's been in the. It's quite, yeah. a, quite a thing. And you, it was in yeah. last it's week's great. paper. It's great. Um, so uh, you can buy. I'll, if you can look in the paper on Thursday, it'll show you where you can get tickets and everything. So my wife will probably text me in a minute. So, um, <laughs> But that's the other thing going on. <laughs> And um, anything else? We had a fi financial forecasting meeting that I think went well. So it's kind of the first step to the whole budget process, which is underway now. That's all I got. Okay. Marty, do you have anything to Yeah, I got a, just a couple of quick things. Um, first of all, let's start with uh, tomorrow evening, Stillwaters, um, which is the new uh, wine outlet in North Situate, is having a tasting from 5 to 9. Um, and they're going to be doing a, a uh, gift basket giveaway so that's something to be to should be a good take uh, five to nine tomorrow evening and then the situate Wednesday? food pantry yeah tomorrow. that'll be tomorrow yeah the fourth and then the situate food pantry um, they've got a, as everybody knows there's they've got a few things going on um, they've been doing the uh, they've got some volunteers working at the uh, transfer station doing the cannon bottle redemptions and there was a little bit of a a scheduling conflict between the uh, food pantry and the youth hockey boosters. So what they've actually did is they, the uh, the hockey boosters with Sandy Reedy, they're working with Kim Ryan and they're actually helping out. Um, and they've been they did very well. They the first day they did it was Sunday and through today they've raised uh, six hundred twenty five dollars for the food pantry. Um, but they are looking for volunteers. It's a, it's a long month. Um, so anybody who's interested in volunteering can either call Kim Ryan at 781-545-1714, or they can be contacted at situatefoodpantry at gmail.com. And then the other, the last thing that I have is that anybody who sees the, uh, the calendars around town, they are beautiful calendars, and it's a $25 donation to the food pantry. Uh, they're at a number of uh, uh, locations. So that's about it. All right, thank you. And I don't have anything, so I'll move on to the next agenda item, which is adjournment. Move to adjourn sure at 8:42. No, I take that back. 8:46. <laughs> second. 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 Rick. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good night, folks. Good night. Sorry.